Hello friend, this video is fifth part of microservice tutorial. In first video, we discuss microservice and monolithic architecture. In second video, we created a Spring Boot application from scratch. In third video, we created a Spring Boot application using MySQL database. And here we created our first microservice student. In fourth video, we created a Spring Boot project using MS SQL uh, database and here we created our second microservice course before moving forward i would like to request you to please like and share this video and please subscribe the channel so in this video we are going to create api gateway here we will keep application name as gateway and language we will use java spring boot so in uh, before we already created first microservice student and the second microservice course now let's go and we'll create an API gateway. API gateway sits in between user interface and services. That means all HTTP requests from user will first come to API gateway and then API gateway will send to service based on criteria. User interface don't have to bother about where all services are running, what are their port, which, service, which server and all. They, they only have to be careful about the gateway port. In this way, we can easily add a common authentication at the gateway level. We can rewrite the request before sending to services, rewriting like we can add any headers or we can add uh, content type, we can remove anything, and we can, we can log all requests and response before and after sending request. Here, we are going to use a Spring Boot gateway. So Spring Boot Gateway provides a library for building API Gateway on top of Spring and Java. It provides a flexible way of routing based on number of criteria. Now let's see the feature of Spring Cloud Gateway. It is built on Spring Framework 5 and Spring Boot 2.0. It is able to match routes on any request attribute like URL, content type, headers. Predicates and filters are specific to routes, so we can write predicate and filter for each different different routes. We can easily add circuit breaker in Spring Cloud Gateway, which we will do in the coming videos. And we can easily integrate Discovery Client. So we will be using Discovery Client as, as a Eureka that we will add in incoming videos. We can easily limit the request coming to the gateway. We can define in the configuration that how many requests we want from each routes path rewriting. We can easily remove and add any properties in the URL such as headers or content type. Here we have our two microservices which we created in last two videos. Now I have to create another Spring Boot project for Spring Cloud Gateway. So for that again we will go to Spring Initializer. Let's write Spring Initializer and uh, Select Maven project Java 2.5.2. This we have done two, three times, so no need to explain. You can see previous videos for that. I'll keep Spring Gateway. Here I will remove from this and uh, com.code. This let me do it code. Okay. This I will remove. I'll choose Java 8. And dependency, we will choose gateway. Just right here, gateway. So this is, it provides a simple yet effective way to route to APIs and provide cross-cutting concerns to them, such as security, monitoring, and resiliency. Click here, and then this dependency is added. Click here to download. And here we have our project, okay? Here, now this we have to uh, import in our STS. Let's go to file, click import, click existing Moven project, browse to that folder. It was on desktop, project, Spring Boot, no, not this one, Spring Gateway. And uh, again, we have to go inside we have to go till dot mvn folder select folder and then finish now it's depend it's, it's downloading all dependencies and here we have our project 
Okay, so this is the structure. Let's go and see in pom.xml. Mm, so here we can see we have dependency Spring Cloud Starter Gateway. So this is for our Spring Cloud Gateway. Okay, and let's see what is inside the here. This is our main method class. Here we don't have to do anything. We have to do uh, here application dot properties. So first let me change the name. Uh, refactor rename because I want to change it to YML file so that we can easily we can easily understand this now it's open let's go inside here yeah. now we have to write here routes so let me copy the those configuration okay I copied the configuration here. See, I have added the server.port. So I want this project to run on 8090 port. And here I have given the name. This is the application name, Spring application. So I have kept the name as gateway, okay? And this is the configuration for our routes and predicates. So here it starts from spring.cloud.gateway.route. And then here, we can provide our different different routes okay so each routes is having id uri predicates and filter like see this one it is having id uri predicate and filters in predicate we can provide a lot of things in filters also we can provide many filters so route is the basic building block of gateway it has id a definition uri a collection of predicates and a collection of filters. A route is matched if aggregate predicate is true. Now what is predicate? Here yeah, this one. This lets you match on anything from the HTTP request such as header or parameter. And we have filters also. In filter, we can modify request and response before or after sending to the downstream request. This ID I have kept as a student module. So this should be unique, like this ID is unique and this ID is also unique. So this ID I have kept as a student module and here URI I have given HTTP uh, localhost 8080. Okay, so my student application is running on 8080. That's why I'm given here 8080. And this is the predicate. Predicate means this, uh, this source path equals slash student slash double asterisk. So whatever is coming after slash student, any URL coming with slash student and after that anything, it will land to this route, okay? It will land to this route. That means it will go to this URL. Similarly, in this, if you see anything in URL coming with slash course slash anything, it will go to this URL and hit the controller, okay? According to the whatever whatever uh, things is there in the URL. And this is the filter. This filter is like request size, argument, max size. So we want to say that uh, the request size should not be more than this byte. So now we have configured our gateway. So just to test it, now we are going to access our course microservice using gateway, okay? So usually we were accessing our course microservice through this, uh, this URL and on port 8081. But now we will access the same microservice using this port 8090, which is the port of gateway, okay? So let's do that one. So for that, first of all, I need to start course uh, course microservice so let me start it run spring boot app okay it's running now and uh, at the same time i will start spring gateway also now our both services are running uh, course microservice is running on 8081 and uh, spring gateway is running on 8090 here is our course microservice. Uh, we have a controller and we will try to access this one slash course slash ID. Okay, or slash all. So let's do it. 
So this is our local host 8090 core slash id slash one. And this URL, you know, this 8090 is running uh, for uh, for gateway. So we are we are trying to access course REST API using gateway. Okay, so we have provided ID equal one. Click here, and uh, we have this record. Okay, if you if you click here, if you just change it to 8081 which is port of course microservice here also you are getting the same response that means now we can access these microservices using our gateway now let's try for uh, get all so for that we have to do like this course now we have only one record so we we got like this now let's try to do it through gateway 90 and yeah here so now we are able to access all the API of course microservice using Spring Cloud Gateway. So guys, you see that we were successfully accessed uh, course microservices APIs using Gateway. But here there is a problem that if we want to replicate the same, same service multiple times, that means we have to run the same service on multiple ports then we have to register all these ports because see here we can register only one port for each service so that that is going to be problem with this this approach so to resolve this approach we will use service registry and discovery where we will use all our services to be registered and then it will be discovered by gateway from the same service so for that we will use the eureka eureka server so eureka server usually holds all the information about all services even gateway also will register on the eureka server and whenever any api is hitting to gateway gateway will try to get uh, information of that service through registry service that means through eureka server and then it will call to that uh, that particular service so that is the best approach so for that registry and discovery server we will create in next video and then we will configure our all application and gateway to that service registry that's all guys for this video we have successfully created our api gateway and we were successfully able to access the course microservice apis through api gateway in next video we are going to create service registry where we will register all our services and gateway and then gateway will access the apis through service registry if you like this video, then please like and share the video and subscribe the channel. Don't forget to click on bell button to get notification for upcoming videos. Thank you.